Well, God said, I ain't going to get one. I'm going to get 144,000. Not by force, but by my love through the Holy Ghost living in them. They will live just like Jesus. And they will be perfect. Not only that, when I get them, I'm going to close probation. I'm going to get the weakest of the weak. Over 6,000 years of sin is going to be in them. And Satan, you can torture them. You can persecute them. You can have the death sentence against them. You can cut off every earthly support against them. So they don't need no food because they've learned how to fast. And you know what? I've seen angels to give them some food as well. They don't need no job. They don't need no family. They don't need no friends. They don't even need their home. And I remove the Holy Ghost from this earth. And I'm going to tell the four angels to loose the four winds. Let them go. If the world really wants to not have me as their God, let them have the devil. But some of you think you're smart putting out baptism. Is that all right? You've got more guts than me. I'm not as smart as you. When I heard the gospel, I gave my heart to Jesus straight away. I did not need to wait. I did not need to prepare. The Holy Ghost prepared me. Amen. And Satan, I'm going to give you full reign on them. But God's going to give Satan one limitation. Praise the Lord. You can't kill him. You can't kill him. And God does one more thing. He hides himself. The sanctuary is closed. No more prayer. We're going to be in church like this, packed up, packed up, packed up, packed up. We're going to be having lovely sermons. You know what we're going on these prayer? Sanctuary is closed. Who's willing to stand for God? To vindicate his glory, his character. And I'm going to rush, but I'm going to try to get through it. In five to seven minutes, Pastor. In Hebrews chapter 9, it talks about the conscience. It talks about the conscience, the living mind. And it says that God, in the earthly century, he couldn't help you with sin, but he couldn't help you with sin in regards to your conscience. Well, you may ask me that, sir. What do you mean? Well, God needs to do more than just forgive us. When we go down and say, Lord, forgive me where I failed thee. You've got to get past that. God's got to do more than that. He's got to do more than just forgive us. He's got to cleanse us. Amen. What do you mean cleanse, sir? You need to, you need to wash my own sins? Yes, but no. God's going to get to a point that he has allowed his Holy Ghost to live in you so you don't even want to sin no more. Amen. Amen. The sanctuary is not no yo-yo thing. When you sin, you confess. You then sin again, you confess. you got to get to the point where the sanctuary cleanses you and gives you the victory over sin. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you something. We think all the sanctuary needs to be cleansed, but who defiles the sanctuary? It's you and I. It's you and I who defile the sanctuary. So who needs the cleansing first? Not the sanctuary, you and I. And that's what the problem is. It is because of his people why Jesus and the Father is still in the sanctuary in heaven because if he ever was to step out of the sanctuary who would forgive you of your sins? <coughs> so two places need to be cleansed. Jeremiah 17 verse 1 tells us that the altar and the brain because when you sin, guess who, guess who knows when you sin? You know and guess where it's in? 
stand on me. So what does God have to do? God doesn't just have to get you a victory over sin that you don't want to do it. Somehow God has to do an operation to cleanse the memory. So you can't do a videotape and play back. Because imagine, imagine someone committed adultery and a woman was in her birthday suit in all her glory. All he needs to do is go back in his memory. It won't just affect his mind, it will affect his body. You know what the Holy Ghost is going to do? He's going to erase that memory of that act from your mind. But hold on now. When the Holy Ghost erases it, then we're going to do something and we download more information. So every time the Holy Ghost tries to clean us, we're downloading more information for him to work. You see, the mind is like a photographic plate. Everything it sees in the states, picture, take, picture, take, picture, take, picture. And it's getting to the point, some of our brains are getting so un... God can't use us for nothing. You see, I highly like what the Bible says, that Jesus says Satan couldn't even get to him by a thought. By a thought. You're going to get to that point, my brothers and my sisters. And you might be saying, I can't do it. But you know what, the Holy Ghost can help you to do it. And Gary tell them that everything and everyone, my sister, is waiting on the 144,000. As my sister's place something cool. I've been thinking about sweet hour prayer, sister. You know, Paul says something about the third heaven in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. And I'm going to get to where I want to get to because I have to cut some things. He said that he was caught up. There was a man caught up to the third heaven. And he heard things which was not lawful for a man to speak on earth. And I'm looking at this text. What do you mean? Do you mean there's a different level of righteousness on earth? That is a different one. Are you telling me there's a different level of righteousness on earth and a different level of righteousness in heaven? He said it was, there was a man caught up to the third heaven and he heard words were heard and allowed to be spoken on planet earth. Well, I've got something I believe I'm learning to unravel. The 144,000, they actually connect into the third dimension. Oh, some of you might be looking hot preaching on oh, mad now. The third, what's the third dimension? Well, it's in two phases. In righteousness, the apostle Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading verse 6. Look at me, my brothers and sisters. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading verse 6. And it says, Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit, it giveth life. Amen. What? The Bible says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay? The letter means, I should not physically commit adultery. But Jesus said, if you look for a woman and lust after her, you commit an adultery. Where? In your heart. Hold on, can your husband divorce you because... No, can you divorce your husband because you're looking for a woman? No, but you can divorce your husband if he physically commits adultery with a person. There's two phases. There's another one. There are certain things that we do on earth now. When we get to heaven, we won't be doing them. Oh, 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 oh preach, what are you talking about? Well, there's certain things that we can't do on the Sabbath. What we can do in the week. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me there's going to be things we can do on earth now, but when we get to heaven and we're saved, we won't be doing that? 
how long the 144,000 are going to live on this earth as though they are in heaven. So they're going to be regulated by the new rules what's going to be going on in heaven while they're still on this earth. There won't be no marriage in heaven. We're going to be like angels. We won't be coming together as a man and a woman. And the Bible says in Revelation 14, it was not defiled with women. Let me tell you something. Before, before probation closes, the 144,000, they won't even have a need to be with a man or a woman. They would have gotten the victory over the natural man so much that the Holy Ghost will be in them so much when they preach, when they teach, the whole of the earth will be filled with the glory of God. Amen. Not only that, but when the century atonement, there's three things as well. We know we need to be forgiven. That's what the sanctuary is for. Praise the Lord. Because without forgiveness, we'll be lost. We need to be cleansed. Yes. Amen. I don't want to get the victory over sin. I don't want to get to the point where I'm struggling with sin because when I'm in heaven, I won't be struggling with sin. So I want to get to that point on here. We are not struggling no more. But hold on. They receive a seal. What is a seal for, sir? This seal. It gives you. You can't sin. Even though, yes, you can. Because God forces nobody. But you're so in love with Jesus. You can't sin. You could never do it in the sight of the living God. And my brothers and my sisters, we need to get to that point where we we won't even dream in the night time that we sinned. You think, you think when you get to heaven, you're going to fuss at the welcome table. You think that when you get to the welcome table, you're going to say, Wait! Where's the dumpling? Hold on. Twins with a fried fish. Oh, I'm going down to her. Four, they live in the third dimension while they're on this earth. Amen. Amen. They get to the point where they want more than just victory over sin. Yes. They just don't even want sin around them. That's right. They're so prayerful and careful of their environment. They don't want no demons around them. That's, right. That's why they don't watch no song. That's why they don't have no worldly music. That's why they don't dress like Jezebel. That's why they don't run after every woman. That's why they don't eat certain things. That's why they don't worship certain way. Some of us are sick down and we don't even know why we are here. I know. I know. They would have entered an environment where the holy angels they just continually walking their wings around them. You know why? Because every time we go in an environment where the we give our angels more warfare, more fighting to do. So protect your environment. You think I can go and dance for them? Go in there and dance in the darkness. The angels are wet. The dead in the grave are wet. The animals will eat. Yes, the whole of heaven is waiting. Yes, sir. Are you willing to be part of that holy number? Yes, it's going to take all. Yes. You might lose your husband. Yes, you might lose your wife. Yes, You'll definitely lose your job. Yes, you might lose some work. Yes, you die in church. Yes, you might not even want to watch no more television. Yes, you might even get upset with certain brothers and sisters in the church. Or the church might get upset with you. You might not even like certain music, but that's all right. Because you don't please man. You please God. The most important thing for your life is to make sure that you and God is one. One. If you hear there's a baptism going on, and you love 
Jesus. You won't tell him you're not ready yet. You tell him Jesus, if you're ready for me, then I'm ready. Amen. I don't, I'm not going to baptize me. You're going to baptize me, Jesus. I can't put my name in the book of life. Jesus is going to put my name in the book of life. If you're ready for me, Jesus, I'm ready. Amen. 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 Oh, are you ready? Are you willing to say, Jesus, I'm ready for you since you're ready for me? Amen. And if that is you, while everybody stands, come down and let me pray with you. Amen. Come down and let me pray with you. Come down and let me pray with you. Come down. Come on, Oh, 